Hey everyone, it's Fahim Farm subscriber, contractor, founder of Medlearn. In this video, I am going to explain to you how we can safely prescribe in a community pharmacy. Now, as always, folks, I need you to like, subscribe and share the channel because together we are going to absolutely build a better world. And this video is not just for pharmacists in a community pharmacy, but it can be for those individuals who want to prescribe privately or even in general practice. So follow me, Farouk, and let's have a look exactly how we are going to learn to prescribe safely. With that said now, three things I want to cover. Number one is how do you become a prescriber? Because without prescribing, we don't need to worry about governance or worry about CPD, upskilling and so on. So firstly folks, let's tackle this, how to become a prescriber. If you're a nurse or a pharmacist or even a allied healthcare professional, couple of things. Number one is you need a designated prescribing practitioner. And this is an individual who is going to support you, motivate you, and has the powers to sign you off to be competent within your scope of practice. So let's break this down. Number one, you need someone who's going to act as your mentor. This person is going to act as your mentor. My advice would be that it should be someone who's experienced, someone who's experienced, taught before, Preferably, I would say, has a medical degree, so a doctor, because they have the experience and understands how to teach and deliver teaching. So think about these things that we would need, okay? If you're unsure about the exact requirements, you can visit the RPS, RPS framework for designated prescribing practitioners. So if you visit the RPS framework, it's a document. It explains exactly what the skills qualities, attributes are required for a designated prescribing practitioner. And folks, if you're struggling to find one, or you're unsure where to start, or you don't know where to go, get in touch with us at MedLearn. We're more than happy to advise you, help you and support you, so you can become clinically the best version of yourself and find someone who can support you while you're on your journey to upskill. Because this is only one part of the puzzle itself. Point two, what we need is we need to select a university, so I'm going to put higher education institution. So if you're a pharmacist, visit the GPHC website, look at accredited courses. If you're a nurse folks, then visit the nurse, and I'm about to, oh wow, I'm struggling with the N here, nurse and midwifery council. And for allied healthcare professionals, for example, shopper days, podiatrists, paramedics and so on, Visit your website and have a look at approved institutions. Right, we've looked at DPP. We've looked at this higher education institutions. We've spoken about how MedLearn can support you and help you develop clinically and also help you find a mentor while you're on our courses. We've spoken about university. Number three, scope of practice. You need to have an area where you're already competent, where you're already seeing patients, where you're already diagnosing and treating, and that's the area that you're gonna focus on to gain your prescribing qualification. You need to have that scope of practice, okay? So it can't be a case of, I like diabetes, so I want to do it in diabetes. No, because the prescribing course, and I've mentioned it many times, is not designed to teach you clinical skills. It's designed to build on the skills you already have and enhance those skills. So you need to already have an area that you're competent in that you can prescribe or gain your prescribing qualification. And we've done plenty of videos on this, so we won't touch on that for now. After the six months, let's say you have your six months course. You've done six months and it can be six to 12 months. You've done your six to 12 month course, you're qualified. How do you now prescribe in a community pharmacy or set up a, an area where you can prescribe safely? The key thing here has to be governance. There has to be some sort of governance, some sort of overarching system in place that makes sure that you can prescribe safely. And what I want to do, come to this side and focus on this. Be careful with the chair. Number one, when I say governance, the first thing you want to think about is some sort of policy needs to be in place. 
a prescribing policy. You need to have a policy in place that will outline what your policy is to prescribe within your practice itself. And if you're unsure about the policy, get in touch with that MedLearn, we can certainly help you. Policy. So we've got a policy in place. Number two, once we have that, of course, you need insurance in place. Some sort of insurance. So that's going to be our policy. We've got insurance. Great. Now, once we have this in place, what about having audits? How do you audit your work? So you're the only healthcare professional working and prescribing. Who's making sure that you're practicing evidence-based? Who's making sure that what you're prescribing is correct? Who's governing you to make sure everything is okay? So you need some sort of audits in place. Very important that you have some sort of audits in place. Okay? Then what you need is going to be part of a multidisciplinary team. Now, think about general practice. When we have doctors in general practice, what do we have? We have various doctors. We have nurses. We have a practice manager. We have the receptionist. You may have a dispensary. You can see there's a whole team. There's a whole team here. They don't work all alone. There's doctors, there's nurses. I'm not saying that you need doctors and nurses. I'm saying that you want to be part of a multidisciplinary team so you can do your audits. You can do your, get your policy in place, your insurance in place. And then you can have regular, regular meetings. Regular meetings, your practice meetings where you discuss cases, where you discuss where things have gone well, where you discuss where things haven't gone well. This is going to be important to have in place. And then you need some sort of overarching, some sort of overarching mentor, like a mentor. And ideally, I would say that should be a doctor, an experienced doctor who's supporting your prescribing practice. Why? Because this doctor, you can discuss your prescribing habits. You can undertake your audits. You can have and make sure policies are correct. And then what you can do is by having this doctor in place, you can do regular CPD. So you're constantly learning. All of this becomes very, very important because policy, process and procedures make sure that your work is robust, it's quality managed, and then you can safely prescribe. If you don't have this in place, you're going to get in trouble. You're not going to be safe. So if you're looking to set this up in a pharmacy and you don't have a policy, you don't have an insurance, you don't have audits in place, you don't have a multidisciplinary team, you don't have some sort of overarching mentor, you don't have regular practice meetings, you're going to struggle. So when you start to set this up in a pharmacy, it is, it is very similar to what you have as a pharmacist, so the GPC standards, but a bit more on top. So I would say what you need, a couple of things, is definitely you need your insurance in place. You need to have a policy in place, your prescribing policy. So for example, will you prescribe for everything and anything? Or just acute conditions? Or chronic conditions? How do you manage them? What about having, when you are looking at this policy, have you thought about continuity of care? Let's say you're prescribing amoxicillin for a patient. How does the patient's GP know that you prescribed the amoxicillin? Have you got continuity of care? Are you giving them the notes? Are these notes going then to their GP? How's that all going to work? So your policy should cover all of this. Who can prescribe? What you prescribe? A general statement about prescribing. That becomes important. Insurance becomes important. Audits. Who's auditing your work? How do we know that your work is best practice and evidence-based? You have that in place. You're part of a multidisciplinary team. You're not working all alone. You have maybe another pharmacist prescriber, maybe a nurse, maybe a doctor. Don't have to be working there full time, but they're available. What about your regular meetings with your mentor to discuss cases, things that have gone well, things that haven't gone so well. And that's important. And having a team to support you is important. So when you do start to prescribe, make sure, of course, of course, you have your consent forms, consent forms. You have thorough notes. So you have your consent forms, you have thorough notes. You are safety netting patients. You're giving advice. So you're safety netting, you're giving advice and you're practicing within your scope. So if you are, have gained your prescribing qualification hypertension and all of a sudden you start to prescribe in asthma, there's gonna be some questions. So this is all important and we've just covered this as an overview. If you have these in place, then you're going to be safe, you're going to be able to manage disease and make sure that you can offer a great service. So a bit about how to prescribe 
safety in a community pharmacy. And folks, it's not rocket science. If you think about this being in place, of course you're going to be safe. Now, as always, together let's build a better world. Thank you for watching and let's make a difference in this world. Hey everyone, it's Fahim, pharmacy prescriber, contractor, founder of MedLearn. In this video, I am going to explain to you how we can safely prescribe in a community pharmacy. Now, as always, folks, I need you to like, subscribe, and share the channel. 